Greetings everyone, and welcome back to another cheapo in-depth phone review. In today's one, I want to show you all not a welcome device, although it is very close to a welcome device in the testing I've done with this thing, but I'm gonna be demonstrating a phone that is sold here in Australia by Vodafone, and it's a budget phone, which, okay, we're not expecting too much from this, but you've kind of already seen this phone in the thumbnail already. And uh, yes, this is a modern design. So let's take a look at this thing that costs $129 Australian and see if it's worth the price or not. Before I continue on, the usual timestamps are in the description as well as the pinned comment so you can skip along to wherever you would like to because I'm going to be looking at some quick specifications for this on Vodafone's website and some other things here and there. So feel free to use those timestamps if you need to. And the option's also there to skip the um, blanks that come up. YouTube is supposedly yelling at people who tell people to use blank so I'll just keep my mouth quiet but I'm sure you can all figure that out all right let's go into story time and ramble time the part where everyone goes nope nope shut up but no I won't shut up I have to tell you all three years ago I reviewed this the Vodafone Smart N10 three years ago time flies and this was an all right device you know with its 5.7 inch all screen don't forget that superior grip is also a feature <laughs> they were running out of features they're like what else can we put on here superior grip perfect done slap that on there and designed and tested by Vodafone, okay? So keep all that in mind. Now, this came out in 2019 and I bought it in 2020. And I watched part of that video recently and my God, it's terrific. I have changed over three years. The difference is amazing. This Vodafone device looks a little something like this. You might be thinking to yourself, hey, shouldn't they have the screen on the box? Uh, no, there's a reason why they don't show the screen on the box because the screen looks a little something like this. Uh, you might be thinking to yourself, hang on, wait, wait, wait. There's nothing wrong here, Smalls. It's a full screen display. What are you talking about on this 2019 design phone? Just hold your horses because, wait for it, this thing's slow. But funny enough, I actually took it out of its box for the first time in probably two years and it still had charge. So well done to you, buddy. 5.7 inch all screen display. Chin, notch, bezels. Yeah, now let's jump three years into the future. And we now have this, the Vodafone V Smart 4G for $129 Australian, which I'll display a rough currency conversion chart just to show you how much this thing would cost all around the world. Just note that this does come with a $30 prepaid SIM pack, but this is locked to the Vodafone network and does cost, I think, shut up, and does cost, I think, $25 or $45 to actually unlock this from the Vodafone network. So part of it is okay value, but let's just say you already have a Vodafone SIM card and you've just bought this for $129 Australian. As we can see from the picture, it doesn't look very appealing at all. And from what I can tell, this phone was released very, very late 2022 or early 2023. Speaking about pricing though, here are some other devices that are sold by Vodafone. So you have the V-Lite 4G for $79, with honestly a more appealing design than this thing right next to it. It just doesn't look good at all. And then for an extra $20, you can get the Vodafone V Pro 4G, which looks a lot better, has more cameras, even though they'd probably be useless, but a lot more features. So this thing in the middle just doesn't really serve a purpose to be fairly honest. And then you've got some other brands like the Nokia C02 4G for $100, the Motorola Moto E13 for $150, which once again, for an extra 20 bucks, you get a lot more value for money with the Moto E13 than the V Smart thing. But Vodafone has a little write up on their website to tell you exactly why you should purchase this phone. The V-Smart 4G is a great choice for those looking for a powerful all-rounder phone at a fantastic price. The V-Smart 4G features a 5.45 inch display, eight megapixel rear camera, and an ergonomic curved design. Keep that in mind. Top features, enjoy great visual experiences with the 5.45 inch FWVGA plus IPS display. Capture and share precious moments with the eight megapixel rear camera. Smart and modern design with curved edges. I cannot stress that enough to keep that in mind. Storage expandable up to 128 gigs so you can keep all your important pictures, music, and videos. Has that sold you on the device? No? Well, maybe the specifications will because we've got Android 12 Go edition on this thing. We've got a MediaTek MT8765WB quad core processor at 1.3 gigahertz. According to the specs list, 32 gigs of internal memory, two gigabytes of RAM, headphone jack, micro USB, the display being the 5.45 inch IPS display with a resolution of 960 by 442 pixels 
pixels and 193 pixels per inch. The Vodafone Smart N10, that's three years old, had a 720p display. Moving on to the cameras, we've got a five megapixel front camera, eight megapixel rear camera with video recording up to 720p at 30 FPS, four times digital zoom and an LED flash. Battery wise is 2,500 milliamp hours and doesn't offer any quick charging support whatsoever. It is just absolutely bog standard. SIM type says micro SIM. That's incorrect. It takes a nano SIM, but agree with it. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, no NFC. Does have an FM radio though. And the network, we've got the 4G bands, 3G bands and 2G bands listed just there. And since this phone has been tweaked to work on Vodafone's network, if you did unlock it, the chances of it working on Telstra and Optus may be a little bit iffy, but I'm fairly sure if you're watching this video, after I start taking a look at this thing, you'll probably go, yeah, no, it's not worth it anyways. So this is all just for reference anyways. I've got apps, dimensions, and what's in the box, and that's pretty much it. Now, before we start taking a look at this phone, I was curious to see the OEM of this device, and it turns out it's made by a company called MobiWire. And I have heard of them before, but I've never reviewed any of their devices. And I did find that this is actually a Mobi wire smart n12 but there's nothing really much else to talk about with them they just say that they offer a team of designers that's always in search of new challenges and are ready to create beautiful and innovative designs that will suit your needs i'm sure they will Alrighty, enough waffle let's have a look at this thing you're looking at this going hey that doesn't look too bad at all you know it's got this nice textured blue back it's the v smart what's wrong with it s'mores you got this big square at the back here that's just for aesthetic reasons, I guess. They couldn't have possibly extended the camera glass or maybe done something. No, we'll just etch it into the frame like that. Perfect, solved. Got a bottom loudspeaker there. And then around the phone, we have the volume rockers, power button at the top of the phone, headphone jack, sides of the phone, nothing there. There's no SIM tray. Ah, and at the bottom, we have a micro USB port as well as a hole for a microphone. But oh boy, what really made me want to review this device is the screen. It's horrific. Ready to see it? Here we go. You can't really see what's going on because you can see the reflection and stuff, but oh boy, it looks worse in person. But at the top, we have our front five megapixel camera and our earpiece with no front sensors as far as I can tell, but we do have a notification LED right there, which is kind of neat. And then we have screen, bezels, and we have the chin. Now, do you remember on Vodafone's website, it said beautiful curved design. They're talking about the curves on the screen because this phone is completely flat. The back is curved, yes, but the screen is completely flat. False advertising or am I misreading it? But now if we just take the back cover off, we're inside the device. And I've put my 64 gig spooky micro SD card in there already, my Vodafone SIM, and we've got the battery here which certainly is a 2,500 milliamp hour battery. Now the information underneath the battery says it's the V Smart 4G. We've got the IMEI there, the bands list, some certifications, uh, some a hearing aid thing, or loud if you put it near your ear or something. Uh, it's designed in France, made in the People's Republic of China. Ah, ah, the, the French. French. Of course, it's the French behind this. You mean to tell me the French were responsible for this? No, they weren't. Nano SIM, nano SIM. You should fix that Vodafone. I'm sure no one's buying these devices anyways. Literally, I had not seen this phone in shops or anything like that. I don't pay much attention to prepaid devices anyways, but of all places, I got this from cash converters for 10 bucks because they said it was faulty because it says emergency calls only. All right, let's power on the 129 Australian dollar budget friendly phone that's good. That's exciting. But like from a distance, if you don't see the bezels, things are looking reasonable, but it's when you see the bezels, you go, Oh, okie dokie. Hang on. Almost there. We've booted up. Wait the time. There we go. And now I can swipe up and we've booted up. It looks absolutely horrific. Look how big that chin is. And the display is obviously 960 by 442. That's pretty low resolution and you can definitely tell that. I just can't get over the bezel size and especially the front camera area as well. How do you design a device with bezels this big, there are so many questions I want to ask because the Vodafone N10 from three years ago, the design choice is reasonable for that. But in 2023, you've got this design. I just, I can't get over it. For a budget device, this is too excessive. This is actually looking like a cheap welcome device. If I didn't know this existed and someone came up to me and said, what do you think of this? I'd say it's a welcome phone because it looks like it. And with its cheap back as well, it's essentially like Vodafone has rebranded a welcome device and are trying to sell it as the next best budget friendly option. Well, I think in every regards to that, MobiWire, you have designed an ugly device. Maybe I'm just not being fair to the Vodafone vSmart 4G. Okay, here's an iPhone 3G from however many years ago. Let's take a look at the bottom. <laughs> 
take a look at the chin on the V-Smart and take a look at the chin on the iPhone 3G. Yes, it has a home button. It serves a purpose. I have tested this thing and it's horrifically slow. With two gigs of RAM and a pretty low end quad core processor, I'm not expecting this thing to be blazingly fast, but just while doing the camera test and stuff, it... Okay, well, hello to you too. It was just so slow and it just came to a grinding halt half the time. So you've been staring at this thing long enough. It has Android 12 Go Edition, which obviously is fairly stock. We do have Instagram installed by default and the Vodafone app is installed by default. You've got all the bare essentials here, which I can't criticize that. That's perfectly fine. And then swiping down, we've got Wi-Fi, Mobile Data, Bluetooth, the LED, which took a few tries, is actually fairly bright for what it is. I was pleasantly surprised that it's as bright as it is. It's as bright as this phone's future. No, that's not being fair. Do not disturb, alarm, airplane mode, auto rotate, battery saver, screen cast, screen record, mic access, camera, and nearby share. And you got some quick options here as well. See how slow the animations are? So I can rearrange them, add storage, all that sort of stuff, nothing too important. And settings is right here. So I guess we should go through settings. Network and internet, I have already connected to Wi-Fi and it's only 2.4 gigahertz. Can't expect too much there. I'm registered on Vodafone. We do have 4G and VOLTE. So I'll splice in the call quality test from this thing. You give it a listen and see what you think of it. Testing the earpiece quality on the Vodafone vSmart 4G. This is what it sounds like. And to be fairly honest, it actually sounds better than I expected. I thought it'd be complete garbage, but it's fairly loud and fairly clear. This is with VOLTE as well. So that's a bit of a bonus. Um, can't really criticize this too much. It works. It sounds good. So let's go on to the microphone quality. And the microphone quality on the Vodafone Smart 4G sounds a little something like this. And from my quick test, it sounds pretty good. I can't really criticize this either. Uh, during the camera test, it obviously sounds a lot better. But during calls, this is what it sounds like. You're going to hear everything that's going on. You can hear me clearly. Um, any interference is due to my Blue Yeti recording this. And it picks up everything. So... Yeah, um, this is pretty much call quality with the Vodafone vSmart 4G, so let's keep moving on. As I said, I was expecting a lot worse from the earpiece, but it's actually fairly loud and fairly clear for what it is, so for just calls, you'll be fine with this. Connected devices is just Bluetooth, nothing to see there. In applications, we can go to all applications, show system, and we can scroll through here. I will open Quick Shortcut Maker just in case they've left anything in here that we can look at, but... I'm fairly sure Vodafone probably has went through this and taken out anything that may have been a bit iffy, perhaps. But we'll see. I'm just scrolling through here real quickly. Dream Lab. What's Dream Lab? I'm sure I'll work it out. Instagram is there. You can uninstall that, I think. We can try to. Uh, Quick Step is there. That could be the launcher. They've renamed it. Nothing much else. Wallpapers? Ooh, got to check the wallpapers soon. Yeah, that's basically it. So it's all looking reasonable. I don't think this would be dodgy in any means. I think Vodafone's gone through it and made sure, but I will double check in Quick Shortcut Maker. Notifications, we don't have too much in here. Blink light. I can show you the notification LED. Also, the micro USB port's upside down, but sure thing. There's a little notification LED just there. Goes blue and it goes red. In battery, for you keen-eyed viewers, you did see that it did say about three hours and 40 minutes left. Yeah, I can say battery life on this thing is pretty terrible. So just doing the camera test alone, which was probably about half an hour of taking photos and videos, it was completely charged when I took it out. When I came back inside, it was at 62% and it just dropped a percentage while we're talking about it. If you start to push this thing anything past looking at it, you'll see the battery life just start to drain. I will not give this life support during the review, so let's just leave it at the 92%. In storage, we've got 32 gigs total with 9.9 .9 gig already used. In sounds, we have all the audio sliders there. The phone ringtone was Kuma. Which, from that, the speaker quality doesn't sound too bad. And Themos. Oh, okay. Anything else within here? Oh, we've got sound enhancement. Best loudness on Android 12. All right, then. Well, we'll leave best loudness on. We'll see how it performs during the speaker test. In display, I have got the brightness level to 100%, and that could explain why the battery life was draining as fast as it is. But if you turn the brightness down, though, okay. Is it broken? Um, all right. Oh, oh there we go. 
Yeah, it works. If you put the brightness down to about 50% while being indoors, this thing is a fingerprint magnet. And with the screen on this being fairly low quality, I'd rather just have it on the max brightness. Moving on, we've got dark theme. If we wanted to enable that, we can, but I'll leave it on default. Nightlight, wallpaper. What wallpapers have we got? We've got one wallpaper, that's it. You can tell as well, they haven't really optimized this phone for these bezels. I have a feeling this phone was meant to have bezel at the top like that and bezel like that, because you can see it there and see it there. So more signs are pointing to they've just slapped this thing together and called it a day. Accessibility, you do have switch access, talk back, text and display settings, system controls, all that sort of stuff. So if you do need accessibility options, it is all here for you. In security, do we have anything in security? Does it open? Oh, hello. Wait. Um, what happened? Did I break it? <laughs> Settings isn't responding. Ah, good phone. Good, very powerful. Oh, hello. There you go. We can do screen lock with no face unlock or anything like that. You're just stuck with patent pin or password. The security update is 5th of April, 2023. And I actually did get an update before filming this video. So that security update and Google Play system update is probably the absolute maximum it's gonna get. This won't get an OS update. The Vodafone Smart N10 is still on Android 9. That did have a few security patches though. In privacy, just the usual settings here. So nothing much to really talk about. Location, safety and emergency, passwords and accounts, digital wellbeing and parental controls. If you want to give this to a kid, if you give this to a kid, they go to school the next day with this phone, they're going to get made fun of. Why do you have such an old phone? You don't even have two rear cameras. What's wrong with you? DuraSpeed, which we've seen on other devices before with MediaTek. In system, we have gestures, which there's no gestures to actually use navigation because it's Android Go edition. Navigation gestures are a little bit too much for this. System update, I'll just double check to make sure. I haven't got another update. Nope, that's it. We're up to date, we're good. In about phone, shows SIM status, model, IMUI, and the Android version. There we go, that's the Easter egg there. Well, it goes a little bit further than that, but you know what I mean. Uptime, build number, and custom built version, Vodafone Smart SSOTL. I will enable developer options. Should I put the animations down to 0.5? You know what, I'm gonna leave it. I want the full true experience of this device. Uh, touching and holding on the main screen is just home settings and wallpaper. And that was a JPEG and wallpapers, which we've already been through. So I guess we should start taking a look at the applications on this, which we really don't have too much to test. I haven't put any of my custom stuff on here first, but I will do after the camera test as I've already put my Gmail onto this thing. So you've got Google Assistant if you want to use that. Calculator looks like we're opening the calculator. There we go. Good. I might get rid of the background apps. Release. Okay. Calendar is Google Calendar. Don't need to check that out. We do need to check the camera out though. And I have to clean the screen again, sorry. Well, here's the camera. We do have autofocus, kind of. It does work, but manual focus works just as well. I say that. There you go. If I go to settings though, there's not too many settings here. You can change the shutter sound, the storage location, picture size is eight megapixels. That's really it. Front camera looks a little something like this. Fixed focus. Once again, bare bones settings, five megapixel is the picture size. And then if I go to video for the front camera, we have 720p, but the rear camera surprisingly is 1920 by 1080 when it was advertised as being 720p on Vodafone's website. I did film the main video test in 1920 by 1080 and and I think I'm gonna go ahead and splice in the photos and videos that I took with the Vodafone V Smart 4G. In the meantime, I'll install some applications and stuff on here and get this prepared for further testing.
test and video quality on the Vodafone V Smart 4G thing. And this is full HD, 1080p, and it's very shaky. There's no stabilization whatsoever. Close to the Frogos, do we have any autofocus or is it not going to work? Maybe we've got to manually do it. There you go. Manual focus works, which is fine. You know, it's going to be just fixed like that the whole time, isn't it? I think so. It was defaulted at 720p, so I've changed it to 1080p just so we get the best quality out of this. Oh, there you go. There is autofocus, so it is fine. Three Muppets just there. Wait for it. Hey, look, I can say the camera performance so far isn't too bad on this. I was expecting a lot worse for the price of this phone, but it's reasonable. It's okay. Still have no idea what that is or where it came from, but it's there. Then these two fellas. Then these two, which they're in a field of dead grass or dead weeds. So they're all looking good. And then there's a whole bunch of lemons everywhere. And I get people asking me all the time, do I eat any of the lemons? Nope. Never touch them. Well, I touched them. Not some vibrant. Zenny looking shiny. Zenny's getting a little rusted, actually. I've just realized it. Nice afternoon sky there as well and zooming into the faraway aircon with four times digital zoom everything looks like pixels oh there's a burb hello um it's fine i mean you're not going to really want to be zooming with this anyways for a basic cheapo phone like this Look, video performance doesn't seem too bad and photo wise doesn't seem too bad so far so uh let's keep moving on then and keep testing this thing out don't fall in the washing machine Don't fall in the washing machine. No, you're gonna fall in the washing machine, silly. Yeah, well, don't question my authority. Now that I'm inside and there's not much lighting, it looks fairly terrible now. The rear camera is just kind of like, uh, I'm giving up here. Ripley, there's a lemon. Would you like a lemon? Look, lemon. Yeah, okay. Not gonna lie, the LED flash on this is actually really, really bright and does help during nighttime performance. And it feels smoother now at night time. Could be just me. Autofocus does kind of work, sort of. Once again, it's super shaky because there's just no stabilization whatsoever, but it's a budget phone. I can't critique it that much. I can critique it because it's just such an ugly design. Uh, 2023 modern design. Or is it 2022 this was made? I'm not too sure. There's a lemon. There's more people screaming. That's perfectly fine. And there's rusted Zenny. I'm gonna have to call you rusted Zenny now, poor bastard. Uh, that's what he's looking like. Not that it's kind of focusing. Yeah, look, it's uh not the best, but it'll do. 720p on the front camera. Um, I look dead. I look really, really pale with this uh, video quality on the front camera. Five megapixels and only 720p, but um, do we have any autofocus? Just quickly, no, we don't. Very uh blurry. It's what it's looking like on the display anyways, it looks fairly blurry and stabilization is uh, not interesting. No, so be it. But look, if I held it perfectly straight, yeah, that's definitely not the best quality. Can I zoom in though? I can zoom in. Hello, how you doing? Very well, thank you. For basic selfies, it's perfectly fine, but uh, anything past that, no. Nah. The rear camera's not too bad, I'll give it that, but the front camera. It really does feel like a welcome phone, to be fairly honest. That's the video test with this thing. God, I just look so pale. <laughs> I need you vitamin D. I'm just installing apps at the moment. Shut up. Okay, we're back. Before I talk about the camera quality, I'm just installing Arc Survival Evolved. That's one thing that's gonna supposedly work on this. I did try and install San Andreas, but that just crashed. So I installed GTA 3 instead. So we'll leave Arc to download in the background. It's done 5% in the last five minutes. Now let's talk about the camera quality of this thing. Honestly, the rear camera isn't too bad. It did capture some fairly good detail for the most part. For the most part, as I said. The colors are a bit washed out. The front five megapixel camera, it will do. It's nothing too special, but it does the job. 720p video on the front as well was reasonable. So at this point in time, we know that for calls and for basic camera use, so far it's okay. Honestly, I can't really say much else about the camera because there's no other options for it. I could have tried open camera to see if I could push a little bit more from the cameras, but I have a feeling it's about as good as we're gonna get with this. But giving myself time to install applications, I'm now down to 82% battery life. Keep in mind the brightness is at 100%. Just quickly in camera as well, once again with the user interface being not quite optimized for the 
bezels in this display, you can actually kind of see them pushed onto the LCD just there. But you've probably noticed a lot more user interface cutouts already during this video. I mean, they fixed the Vodafone icon, which is good. Continuing on, we've got Chrome. There's Google. Oh, there's a standard Gboard too. If I type in MobileWire N12 onto Google, it comes up with the chipset being MT6357VA, which I don't think that's correct. I actually don't know what system on chip is actually in this. I don't think it was what was specified on Vodafone's website. Keep in mind, I'm also downloading Arc in the background as well, but to give you an idea of browser performance though, it's not going to be anything too special. I have already tested this beforehand and it is pretty laggy for the most part. That quad core processor is definitely not the fastest in this and with only two gigabytes of RAM, there's only so much you can do, but maybe why his website opened up fast. Oh, we're pioneers in the mobile phone industry in France and have 20 years of experience in telecommunications. Wait a second, they're actually French? That can't be true. Look, there's not much else I can really say for browsing. If you just wanted to open up Chrome and quickly look at something for a basic device, it'll do the job fine, but don't expect it to be a top performer. Browsing through social media and all that sort of stuff, you'll feel this thing start to really, really lag. I mean, just from home screen to menu list, you can feel the lagginess already. Clock, contacts, device info hardware we'll get back to. What's Dream Labs, actually? Or Dream Lab? I actually don't know what it is. What are you? Powered by Vodafone, okie dokie. To help solve some of the world's biggest health problems while you sleep. When you power Dream Lab, your phone downloads small problems from a huge research project in the cloud to calculate and sends the results back to the research team. Charge up to power cancer research. Huh, and you give data to Vodafone. I won't say anything about this. I'll leave you folks to work out what you think of this. That would drain battery life even faster if you had this on. But it's for a good cause, I suppose. So it is worth it. Drive, Facebook. Do we really need to open Facebook? Now we can leave it. Google Files looks a little something like Google Files. Stock, arcs halfway, we're getting there. FM radio, we can try the FM radio. What's on Australian radio on a Thursday night at 11, 18 p.m.? If you hold the earphones up to the roof, it does work. Doesn't sound too bad. But once the headphones get taken out, that's it. No more FM radio. I've noticed that most flagships don't even have FM radios now. I mean, I guess you really don't need an FM radio on a flagship, but it'd be good to just offer it because it's on a lot of budget devices. So it's here if you want to use it. Gallery we've already taken a look at. Geekbench we'll come back to. Gmail, Google, uh, Google, what's this? Google Lens, Google TV. They'll discontinue that in like two months. GTA 3, we can test on this. It should run perfectly fine, but we'll see how we go. Instagram, actually, can we uninstall Instagram? Or is it just built onto this? No, you can't uninstall it. You're stuck with it. We've got Maps up next, which I actually did a quick GPS test and walked around the backyard and it seemed fairly accurate. So I guess that's fine. People sometimes ask, what's the GPS like on these cheaper devices? It works. That's all I can say. Google Meet, haven't they discontinued that already? Not sure. Messages, the phone dialer looking fairly stock, which is one good thing I like about this is that it's completely stock and doesn't have all of the usual carrier bloatware. We've got some little things here and there, but it's not too bad. Play Store, which I've been into. Too bad I couldn't install Genshin Impact on this thing. Would have, uh, would have run good. Quick Shortcut Maker, we will come back to. Settings, we've been through. Vodafone, Sim stuff. Sound Recorder, what does that look like? Let's give a little weird icon. There. Oh, yep. The little meter there. Nothing too special. CPU system info we'll come back to, but we can do the YouTube test, which I'll let Arc finish this off and then we'll try the YouTube test so I get the optimal quality out of this. Arc Survival Evolved has finally installed. So now we can go back to YouTube. So let's check the quality. What can we change it to? I can do 1080p 60fps. This is going to struggle. It's not downloading anything in the background either. Wait for it to kick in. Hasn't kicked in yet. Now it's kicked in. Ouch. Okay, that's really pushing it. Let me put it down to 720p then. We want to use all 5.45 inches of real estate we have on this, so, you know, we may as well have it in nice quality. Come on, you can do it. There you go. Okay, it was good for about four seconds. Oh, it's come good again. Look how much real estate you get with YouTube. Yes, you can zoom in, but just by default, <laughs> you don't get a lot. I still can't get over these bezels. It's getting there. <laughs> 
I have a feeling Arc Survival Evolved won't work. 720p YouTube video was pushing this thing. Okay, let's try YouTube music then. So this is with Best Loudness on, and with the speaker being on the back as well, which I haven't seen that in ages. Even the recent welcome devices I've had a look at had a bottom firing speaker. Not on the back, okay. Oh, hello. That's not bad. That's actually reasonable, to be fairly honest. I mean, during the ringtones, it sounded pretty good. Best loudness is obviously helping to crank out a little bit more from the speaker. I'll just turn off best loudness, just in case. What does the battery say? Two hours and 55 minutes left, alrighty. Oh yeah, there's definitely a difference now. But that's acceptable. I can hear the details in there. Some of it's not the best you know, due to the nature of this song, but I'll give it a pass. So now we're up to calls are okay, camera is okay, messaging is fine, music's also fine. Still hasn't won me over yet. Who walks into Vodafone and goes, I want a cheap device and picks this one instead of the Pro variant? which is a lot better than this. Don't ask questions, Smalls, don't ask questions. Well, I've tested all of the default applications on here and I'm getting a good idea of the performance. So I'm gonna go straight into Geekbench. I wanna see what we have in here. We don't have the whatever it said on the Vodafone listing. We have an MT6739WA processor in this and it is the MobiWire Vodafone Smart 4G running Android 12. So I'll run the CPU benchmark. Who knows how long this will take, but I'll leave it. Hopefully it doesn't crash and We'll be right back to see the scores from this. 25 minutes later, you can do it, buddy. Come on. You can do it. 10 more percent, and you'll be there. Oh. It's done. Here we go. What do we got? 89 and 303. This is almost on par with the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra clone that I had a look at a few weeks ago. But taking a look at other scores from a few other devices, like the Sugar A100 that had the MT6739 in it, that got a single core score of 104, and the multi-core score was 313, which is pretty close to what we got here. And the Liego M9 with its MediaTek MT6580 got 51 for single and 150 for the multi-core score. So this is pretty much bottom of the barrel in terms of performance. The Nokia C02 that's offered by Vodafone for $99 at the moment has a 720p display, a Unisoc 9832E quad-core processor, two gigs of RAM, has an IP rating, that looks way better than this thing and would probably outperform this thing. So more of a reason to not even think about purchasing this. I mean, the Sugar A100 is only $80 Australian. Granted, it is a bit iffy, but at least it works on all networks. This is locked to Vodafone and you have to pay them to unlock it. Well, seeing that gives me a good idea on how gaming's gonna be on this. So I guess we should give that a go. Well, with GTA 3, that should run perfectly fine on this. So let's give that a quick shot. Also, the battery's now down to 64%. Geekbench took, I think, 25 minutes or so to complete that. It's not the longest I've had to wait. With everything set to the maximum settings, let's see how this runs. I expect it to be perfectly fine. Looks like it. Benchy. I know a place the edge of the Gotta be careful not to cover up the uh, bottom speaker. But if you were doing gaming on this, you might accidentally do that. But yeah, look, this is fine. We, uh, well, some slight slowdown. It's not perfect. Sorry. I mean, whoops, just yeeted them out of existence. To be fair, if you're purchasing this phone specifically for gaming, yeah, that's not really gonna work well. I mean, for basic 2D games and stuff, I assume that will be no problems because it's smooth for the most part, but it's just that you're losing real estate with the black bars going down instead of just having uniformed bezels on this thing, it would be much better. Let's now push this thing and play Ark then. I don't think Ark will work. I don't know how many times I've had to clean the screen on this thing, but it is a fingerprint magnet. It is glass, but it just collects fingerprints. Like, I don't know what. I reckon this will crash. Am I right? Did it crash? 
Let's just wait and see. Also, during the Geekbench test, the phone got extremely warm off the top too. It's still quite warm, not as bad as it was, but yeah, we're pushing this thing to its limits, I think. Just not touch it. Maybe it'll come up and say, Arc's not responding. While we wait for Arc to load, I was originally gonna take a look at this phone right here, the blue W310 something or other. It runs Windows Mobile, and I thought it'd be an interesting phone to review on the channel, but realistically though, with the OS that it's running, I can't really do too much on it. I did look up gaming and stuff, and with the low specs of this, I just don't think it would make for an interesting video. I'd be able to do the camera test, I'd maybe be able to make a 3G call with it, so honestly, if I was to review a Windows phone, I'd review probably a 950XL or something like that, or even a 1020, but that wouldn't be anytime soon, that would be later down the track, so I know I did say in a previous video that I was going to take a look at it, but after powering it on and having a stuff around with it, I just don't think I will review one at this point in time. I've got so many other things to cover at the moment, so I know the experience is still fairly good with this. It runs decent enough, but I just don't think it's worth a review at this point in time. Anyways, uh, Arc is not working. Oh, has it? Yeah, no, that's... Is it dead? Oh, hello. It's still... Oh, it's hot. Woof. Wait, wait. Oh, yeah, I think it crashed. Yep. I'll give up on Arc. Let's give it effort for at least trying. Honestly, I wasn't expecting that to run anyways. And even if it did run, it would be... Very, very, very slow. Let's check the specs of this thing to double check everything that's promised on this device. So we have a 960 by 444 display. Hang on, that's two pixels more than advertised. Holy moly, we got an extra two pixels. That's worth it. Two gigabytes of LPDDR3 in this. Actually, how old is the MT6739? 2017, it's six years old. I didn't realize it was that old. So hang on, what is the MT8765WB that they're claiming? The MT8765, 66B is a processor for a tablet, so that could be just a rebranded MT6739WA, possibly. Well, that's very confusing, that's for sure. And we've got the PowerVR Rogue G8100 GPU in this as well. System says our manufacturer is MobiWi, which is all confirmed there. Screen, 960 by 444. Pixels per inch is 160, though. Didn't it say 190 on Photofire? I think 160 is about right. Let's do a screen test. What would it be? Five? Two-point multi-touch. Two gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage. The camera is 8 megapixel and 5 megapixel. All correct there. Battery says 1,000 milliamp hours, but we know it's a 2,500 milliamp hour one that doesn't quite last that long in this thing. Sensors, we have an accelerometer and a proximity sensor, but nothing else. Just checking the other app real quickly, just to make sure everything is correct, which it seems to be. The board is VQ558, which might help us. Android 12... The system on chip is there, memory is all correct, RAM is all correct, screen says 5.9 inches, 444 by 826, it's close enough, but 160 pixels per inch. Battery, yes, good. Capacity, that's not correct. Thermal, 25 degrees, about right at the moment I'd say, maybe a little bit more. Accelerometer and a proximity sensor. Cameras, 8 megapixel, 5 megapixel. You can go back. <laughs> uh, I just, I just, I, I would like to go back. Just, just let me go back one. Oh, there we go. Finally, I guess we'll open up Quick Shortcut Maker and see if there's anything worth opening. We've got a factory mode here. Oh, yep. There's your factory mode. Oh, there we go. Are you sure power off? No. Is there anything else that might be hidden in here? Quick Step is the launcher. It is Launcher 3, but they've renamed it Quick Step. So yeah, fair enough. I don't see anything else in here, apart from the factory mode. I thought maybe we might have found something in here, but nope, all seems pretty good. Well, I guess that's everything that I need to look at on this thing. I've tested the speaker quality, performance, gaming, web browsing, all the other features and stuff. Don't buy this. It's not worth it. That Nokia C02 is cheaper and is way better than this. I don't recommend purchasing this 129 Australian dollar phone that's locked to photo phone with specs in it that are basically six years old and with it looking like this that I've already said, why would someone pay 129 Australian dollars for this when they could buy the Nokia that's $99 or the pro version of this that's 150 or the Motorola that's 150? You'd be much better going with that. So its current retail price is just 
silly. I thought when I reviewed the Vodafone N10 in 2020 that that was silly because of the design, but this just takes it to a whole new level of how did they think this bezel size would be perfectly fine in 2023. I've looked at welcome devices that are about the same price as this with minimal bezels, and it baffles me how Vodafone was like, yes, that phone right there, that's the one we want to sell as a good budget option. Let's choose that. They're very silly. I'm powering this off. It's also horrifically slow as well. I mean, for a processor in this that's six years old, you can't really expect too much. Being completely fair though, for basic needs, this will be perfectly fine. But I just think that if someone's seen the Nokia and this side by side, most people are gonna choose the Nokia because it just looks a lot better than this ugly thing. Anyways, I'm picking on this too much, I'm sorry. Let's give it a chance. Let's tear it down. See what the guts look like. If I can take the shielding off, I will, but I think I'll leave it. If anyone out there watching this video right now owns this phone, please tell me if you're satisfied with it and you don't mind the screen being like it is. I just, I don't understand why someone would want this when there's phones that Vodafone have for the same price that look better than... Th if any Vodafone employee is watching this right now, don't you dare recommend this phone to anyone who walks in your store. Sell them something better. Don't sell them this thing. They'll be back in three minutes to complain that their Gmail's not working. Gotta break through the warranty sticker. There goes my warranty. Taking the back plastics off, we have the bottom speaker, which is just in there. It's not mounted in any other housing. It's just stuck right on there, but it works. It's just a standard little thing. Can't really say much else about it. We do have the coin style vibration motor just there. The bottom PCB with the micro USB port. The microphone is just on there as well. Then we've got the flex ribbon that connects the bottom PCB to the motherboard. So we'll take this off, get a better look at the motherboard in this. So we do have room for a second SIM slot just there. Since this is locked to Vodafone and all that sort of stuff, that's not included. I'm fairly sure the actual MobiWire N12 comes with dual SIM by default. There are pads for NFC. That's not implemented. That's interesting. Wasn't expecting that. Well, we've got one screw that holds everything down. So I'll take that off. Take off the one flex cable. There we go. Wow, I was not expecting that. They actually put cooling in this. They put some copper tape in this. I mean, it obviously really doesn't work because it's still got hot, but they put thermal pads in there and everything. Okay, I will give them slight effort for doing that. Usually it's just plop straight against the metal frame, but there is some cooling implemented. It's not the best. It's not a vapor chamber or anything like that, but it's something. So well done to you, MobiWire. Earpiece is actually located right there. The earpiece starts right there and goes there, but it works, it's fine. So there's obviously a little channel that it goes through to come out the little slit there. It's just strange, I haven't seen one all the way over there. Let's take a look at this thing. So we've got the front five megapixel camera just there and the rear eight megapixel camera. It's just this fella, no optical image stabilization. I don't think it would have had AIS either. Looking at the shielding, I can remove it. It's the shielding with the little tabs on them. They actually put thermal paste in here too? Wow. Okay, I was picking on maybe why the whole entire video and they've actually done some things that I would not have seen on a budget device. But it doesn't matter if you put thermal paste and cooling on an MT6739, it's still gonna heat up at the end of the day. But well done to them for at least doing that though. I do like their application though. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Now, I can't quite see the MediaTek chip in there, but I would trust that it's the MT6739. But we do have a Samsung module just there, which I'll Google that just to make sure it does correspond with 2 gig LPDDR3 and 32 gigs of eMMC. But that's really it on this motherboard. Should I replace the thermal paste? No, I'll leave it. I'll go ahead and put this thing back together. We'll see if it still works. And I think we can call this a video. I haven't put all the screws back in yet, but I just want to make sure this still works. Certainly does. I'll display the full specifications to the side of the device, all the correct specifications for the Vodafone vSmart 4G that's made by MobiWire. Vodafone should probably fix the CPU on the advertising, perhaps? Might be a good idea. They also might want to add the two extra pixels to the screen resolution. That makes all the difference. And video in 1080p as well. You can do 1080p video on this. Another quality feature of this phone. As I've already said for the price of this, I can't justify it. Even a Xiaomi Redmi from like 2015 would look more appealing than this. Also, I didn't realize how generic the battery looks as well. They could have slapped a Vodafone logo on there or something to make it look a little fancier, but oh, it is what it is. It's back together, it all works. So we're done with this one. That can join the rest of the pile of devices in my collection that I still question why I own to this day. But it looks like you've made it to the end of the video. 
So thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to watch through this very rambly and incoherent video of me taking a look at this cheapo device that's sold at Vodafone. I hope you've all enjoyed it, but if you've had to use timestamps to skip along past me rambling and waffling on about the device for almost an hour on end, then that's perfectly fine. That's why they're there for you. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you folks about this thing. What do you think about this? Do you think it's a device that's worth it? Do you think Vodafone should change their advertising on the website for it? Let me know down in the comments below. But that is going to do it for another in-depth cheapo phone review. I hope you all have thoroughly enjoyed this video. And I'm glad I've finally taken a look at it because it's been sitting to the side and I've just been testing it here and there and I've just went, I really want to get this video done. I think I showcased it on a stream once and everyone just kind of went, oh, oh boy. Well, I hope you've all thoroughly enjoyed looking at bezels for an hour. Anyways, everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And as always, take care, stay safe, bigger people, and I'll see you all in the next video, which will be looking at something. I actually have two sample items I have to review during August, but I do have some other plans with some other devices. And yes, I know I have to edit like a 24 hour job lot. That's going to take me forever. Until the next time I see you all, take care, and I guess I'll see you when I see you. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks guys for watching and I'll catch you all in the next video.